Good morning, church. Welcome to our Monday morning, 9 a.m. Facebook devotion as we have been going through books of the Bible in the New Testament since March. And so we started going through the book of Acts, then we went through the book of Philippians and Colossians, and now we are in the book of Galatians. And today we're going to be in Galatians chapter 2. I'm going to be using an ESV uh, translation of the Bible, the English Standard Version. And so if you have your Bible before you, turn this morning to Galatians 2. Or if you're using the YouVersion Bible app, Galatians 2. Also make sure that you hit that share button on your Facebook page as you share this with your family and friends. As the body of believers, the church is able to connect together through this virtual technology to be able to grow in a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And also to stay connected with each other. So this morning it's going to be Galatians chapter 2. Before we get started and as people join on and uh, hit share, uh, just uh, one question uh, that we're going to start our morning with and that is, what was your praise God moment over the weekend? And so let's just start this Monday morning with some praise to God. So a praise God moment over the weekend. Uh, some of the praise God moments that I had over the weekend is on Saturday, I uh, was blessed. Uh, to be able to officiate a wedding that was beautiful and it was a praise God moment because it was raining it was an outdoor wedding and just before the wedding was to start at 2 o'clock at about 156 157 the rain started to let down and it actually turned into a beautiful wedding and afternoon and evening and so that was definitely a praise God moment so what is a praise God moment for you from this past weekend when that wedding was over, I was able to drive back to church and to see a wedding of a former youth director from St. Mark's, Trevor Kunze, uh, who got married to Caitlin Forkey, and Caitlin's dad is a pastor in Peace, Eau Claire, and the LCMS. And so it was a wedding that was very much like a worship service. And so it was neat to see a bride and a groom singing worship and praise songs in the middle of their wedding ceremony. Later that evening, had the privilege to officiate a funeral for an 86-year-old uh, believer in Jesus Christ who has been called home and who lived a blessed life of 86 years. And so it really was a funeral and celebration. So I had a lot of praise God moments on Saturday. And then Sunday, praise God moments, worship, and three baptisms yesterday here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church. And so what was your praise God moment over the weekend? I believe that's probably the best way for us to start on Monday morning is just praising God. And I don't know if you were able to worship with us in person or online, uh, but yesterday during the worship service, we sang a new song for the second song during worship. So it's around the nine minute mark. If you go back to our Facebook live uh, post, Alive and Breathing, uh, Praise the Lord. It was a song written by Matt Marr. Matt, uh, came to Mount Olive two times in the past years uh, to lead us in a worship concert, and so we were blessed to have him. But I just, uh, we praise God for the music, ability, and talent that we have at our church because our band just rocked that song. And so it just says, if you're alive and breathing, then praise the Lord. And so what was your praise God moment over the weekend? Let's uh, share that with the body there. On the Facebook page as uh, we get ready to get into our devotion Galatians chapter 2 and so in Galatians chapter 2 we know that Paul is writing this epistle this letter to the church at Galatia and he is writing to oppose so that no false gospel gets into this church that's already happening by the Judaizers and the Judaizers are trying to take Christians and bring them back into the legalism to the law of Moses and the law of the Jews. And Paul is standing strong and saying, don't fall into that trap. We have freedom in the gospel because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And we don't wanna preach some other type of gospel that yes, Jesus died for you, but then you also have to do this, this, and this on top of that to be saved. No, God did all the work for us to be saved. What can we as dead people in our sin do to save ourselves? Nothing. God's the one who has to rescue us and make us come alive. And he does that through the power of the gospel. And so Paul is standing firm on that. And as he's standing firm on that, he's also standing firm on that it is the same Lord Jesus 
who called Peter, James, and John into ministry and the apostles who also called me. And so this is not something I chose on my own. I was persecuting Christians. It was Jesus who came into my life and he's the one who's making the changes in me. And he's the one who has called me to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And so that's what's going on in Galatians 1 as we start Galatians 2. It says, Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. So after 14 years, some theologians say the 14 years began with the conversion of Paul. Some say it was his first trip to Jerusalem. Either way, he's just saying it's been a long time, 14 years, since I've been back here to Jerusalem. What's happening in Jerusalem? It's where the headquarters of the Christian church is, led by Peter and also the half-brother of Jesus, James, and John, and so that's kind of headquarters. And their ministry target is ministering to the Jewish people that they will come to know that Messiah has come and been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And so Peter is really focused on ministering to the Jewish people, while Paul is focused on ministering to the Gentiles, those who were not born Jewish or brought up in Jewish tradition, but to all the other nations and the Gentiles. And taking Titus along with me, Titus was a Greek. He was a Gentile who became a convert through the power of the spreading of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And Paul is going to use him here as a brother in the ministry, but also as an example. He says, I went up because of a revelation and set before them, though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles in order to make sure I was not running or had not run in vain. This is one thing I love about the Apostle Paul. He was not a lone ranger. He was not out there doing ministry to the Gentiles and doing his own thing without permission or without running things through the headquarters at Jerusalem, through Peter and the leadership there. He's just not doing his own thing and then just doing whatever ministry he wants to do. He's checking in to making sure that they are on the same page and that he's fulfilling the mission of Jesus Christ and so that the church stays unified as it's reaching out to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And so he's checking himself and he's checking his ministry because it's not about himself and it's not about his ministry. It's the Lord's ministry. It's the Lord's church. And so I love that about Paul. And so he's checking in with them, with the leadership. Everyone submits to leadership. Uh, Jesus is our leader. We submit to him. We also have times where we have bosses or we have people that God has placed an authority over us. And so we don't do a uh, Lone Ranger type activity. We, as a body of believers in Christ, do what's best for the Lord and for His church, always being faithful to His Word. And that's what Paul's doing here. Verse 3, But even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery. To them, we did not yield in submission, even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. And so what's happening is, is these Judaizers, who are wanting to pull people away from Christianity and the true gospel, that were saved by God's grace through faith alone in Jesus, that Jesus has done the work for us, they're trying to add on to that and say, you must be circumcised and you must follow the law of Moses. You must become Jewish in a sense, is what they're trying to do, as they're trying to add these do's and don'ts to the gospel. And as they are trying to do that, there are these spies, these people that Paul thought were in ministry with him, but instead have really been secretly spying on him and then sending word back to Jerusalem and to Peter, trying to trip Paul up. And as they're trying to trip Paul up, Paul says, not for a moment did I submit to that because I will never submit to someone who's trying to preach some other gospel and add a list of the do's and don'ts. I stand on the gospel alone, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and that he saved us, he does the work, that salvation is a gift from him because of what he's accomplished for us. And what do you do to receive a gift? Absolutely nothing. The gift giver did all the work. You just get to receive it. And 
the Apostle Paul is not going to allow any person to take part in their salvation in the works and the laws of Moses. And so he says, Titus, look at him as an example. He's been saved. He's heard the gospel. He's given his life to Jesus Christ and to ministry. And he was not circumcised because he's a Greek and he doesn't have to be. You don't have to be circumcised to be saved. The Apostle Paul is standing on the true gospel. And on that, he will not submit when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, not even for a moment. He said, no matter how influential even the leaders or these spies claim to be. Verse six, and from those who seem to be influential, what they were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. God shows no favoritism. We are all followers of Jesus Christ. It's not about title and rank for the Apostle Paul. It's not about the power of your influence. It's about the mission and the purpose of the church that Jesus has entrusted to us. Verse 7, On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to the circumcised worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles. And so you have these two ministries happening, but the same mission and purpose, and that's to bring people to saving faith in Jesus Christ. Peter is leading the ministry to reaching out with the gospel to the Jewish people, to the circumcised. Paul has been called by God, even though he was Jewish and, and was raised that way, to reach out to the Gentiles because he also had dual citizenship and he knew the Greeks and the Gentiles. And so God had gifted him for that. And so one mission, one purpose to, con to uh, share the good news of gospel of Jesus Christ to bring people into the church, but two avenues of the church, one reaching out to the Jews, one reaching out to the Gentiles, is what Paul is saying here. And so it's important that we stay unified in the mission and don't become divided. And this has already came up when we started with the book of Acts. Remember Acts 15? This was a debate at the Jerusalem Council. What do these Gentile converts have to do to grow in their faith and to be followers of Jesus? And there, some of the Jewish leaders were saying they need to be circumcised. Paul stood strong. He said, no, they don't. Uh, their salvation, salvation comes through the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And then the Jerusalem Council agreed and then said and boiled all those laws down to just asking them to do four things as they grow in their faith. And that was to stay away from worship and polluting themselves to false idols. That first commandment, you shall have no other gods. They said, let's just start there in their steps of faith now that they've been saved. And so verse nine, and when James and Cephas, who is Peter and John, who seemed to be pillars, leaders of the church, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. He's saying to Galatia, the leaders of the Jerusalem council, the church, Peter, James, and John, we've already had a handshake on this. We are in agreement and they've already given me permission to take this gospel out to the Gentiles and not to force them to fall into the traps of legalism when it comes to the Jewish faith and the Jewish traditions, that we are no longer Greek, Jew, or Gentile, we are all sons and daughters of Abraham. In Jesus Christ, it's not about the division, it's about that unity. And he said, we've already had the handshake on this. I've already had their sign of approval. And so they shook on this. And then look what it says in verse 10, our last verse for today. Only they asked us to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. So they handshake on the mission and purpose of Paul to reach out to the Gentiles, to share the gospel and the true gospel. But the only thing they say is, remember the poor while you're out there on the mission field. And Paul says, I'm already eager to do that. Because for the Christian church, many Christians in this time, they're being persecuted. And so they're being kicked out of their families. They're losing their jobs. They're losing their way of life. And they're giving up everything to follow Jesus. And so it's important that the church comes along and helps take care of them in the mission of Jesus Christ and to be that generous, radical giving church to help them in the community and throughout the world 
with the gift of their generosity that we saw in the book of Acts, that Acts 2 church that's in the Word, breaking bread together, but then is also meeting together and fellowshipping together, but then also giving for the needs of others and especially taking care of the poor, the widows, and the orphans. And Paul says, I'm eager to do that. That's why I've been called to go out and to share the gospel, but also to take care of people's physical needs. And especially uh, to those who don't know Jesus yet, it's a way of sharing the gospel with them is by meeting them in their needs. And for those who have become followers of Jesus and being persecuted for it, we as the church can help take care of them. And so church, uh, thanks for spending your Monday morning with us as we're going through the book of Galatians. Tomorrow we'll continue on with chapter two. But before we go, Let's bow our heads and let's pray and ask God to bless our day as we go out to the mission field that he's called us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful and we praise you for all of the praise God moments of this past weekend and especially throughout our life. We praise you for all the blessings that you give to us each and every day and you bless us because you are the great gift giver. We know in your word that every good and gracious gift comes from above, comes from you. It's your heart. You love to give us blessings, Lord. Not so that it becomes about us, but that we use those blessings to use it to minister to others that you've called into our lives. Lord, as we go out to the mission field today, keep your church unified. Keep your church steadfast and holding firm and true to the one gospel that comes through our Savior Jesus and through the power of the cross and through his resurrection, that great gift of grace alone that we are saved, saved for a purpose, to go out today and to be your hands and feet as we enter the mission field. And that mission field could be our marriage, it can be our family, it can be our home, it can be where we work or where we play today or wherever this day takes us. Every encounter that we have with someone, Lord, is an opportunity for us to be Jesus to them. May you bless our day in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Church, have a blessed Monday as we go out to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Have a blessed day in His name.